Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to discuss what I do in legal ops and at the end, what you could potentially be doing in legal operations. If you haven't already, click up here to watch my first video where I talked about why I switched to legal ops. If you're new here, I am a lawyer living in the Bay Area and I recently switched my job from being a commercial counsel to a legal operations manager at the beginning of this year. So it's a new career path that I am embarking on and I wanted to share it with you guys in case you're interested or just curious to know what legal ops is. So in this video, I'm going to break down what I do in different categories and then like I mentioned at the end, I will talk about what you could also be doing in legal ops. I don't currently do, but will probably be doing in the future. So if you're interested, then keep on watching. The first category I wanted to mention is the legal tech stack. So this is basically all of the legal technology that the legal team uses or maybe other teams across the organization uses that legal also participates in. I really feel like legal operations is the person that should understand the technology, find the technology, often implement it, run it, be the most familiar with it. And this is one of the things that I really enjoyed about legal operations and why I wanted to go into it was because at my previous positions, I really enjoyed that technology piece of it. And so here I would be able to have the opportunity to run it and implement those systems. So for us, that's a contract management system or a CLM, contract lifecycle management system. Basically a technology that can help you with your contracts, whether that's generating contracts contracts, storing them, keeping track of the interim drafts back and forth, the whole life cycle of a contract from beginning until the end. So before I started at my current company, uh, they already chose to use Ironclad, which is the one that we currently use. I had no experience prior with Ironclad. I had heard about it previously, and we even looked at it at a co previous company that I was with, but we went with something different. Um, so it was really me learning all about this new technology, how to implement it. It had been kind of soft launched, but it required a lot more maintenance and work. And the main thing about Ironclad, that which is awesome, is you can generate contracts from templates. And uh, you do a little bit of what I consider pseudo coding because you basically have like a Google form or a launch form that the sales team or you could use to fill out and then that spits out the contract based on your template. But obviously in order to get those data fields onto your template, you have to code them onto your template. And so Ironclad makes it pretty easy for you to do that, but it does require some testing, some basic knowledge of how things work. And then of course, it also requires some training. So teaching your attorneys how to use it, teaching other people how to approve, what to expect when they use it, and that was one thing that I spent a lot of time, at least in the beginning, and now that it's more of a maintenance path where if things get broken, trying to fix it, working with sales ops to make sure things that are pulling from Salesforce are working correctly. So our CLM or our contract management system is always evolving, and that's why you always have to be on top of it, uh, attending product keynotes, making sure you know what product updates there are, and how you can help your company. Next in our legal tech stack that was important when I first started was creating a ticketing system. So I mentioned this in my day in the life, but essentially we needed a way to track legal requests coming in from the organization, uh, assigning them to people, getting metrics on how long it took to close them, being able to track the comments, drafts back and forth. You can imagine that most companies nowadays use Slack and less and less of them use email. But a lot of these requests are coming in through direct messages, different channels, tagging people. It was a mess and luckily we didn't have that many attorneys, but I can imagine at a larger company, they have a lot of attorneys that are trying to track multiple things going on and you need some system for that. So it was really my opportunity to go out there and see what technology was out there that can help us with this task. So after looking at different ones, I ended up going with Jira Service Management. Um, different reasons, but in the end, it was what, everything that we needed. The main thing being that it integrates with Slack. People can create tickets that go into our legal queue by submitting them in Slack, and then they can also respond to comments in Slack back and forth, which was a game changer for us because most of our requesters live in Slack and we didn't want them to have to learn a new portal. So. That also, obviously I had to learn how to use it. I had to set it up, which also required 
um, a lot of back end work, um, hours of testing things, figuring out, you know, if I do this, how do I get that? Um, they obviously have some base packages, but you, you know, in order to really build it out the way you want it and customize it, it takes a lot of work. So it was fun and I enjoyed that part of it, but that might be something that you're going to be doing if you go into legal operations. The next category I want to cover is contract management. So my main focus during the day is to make sure that sales is getting all that they need from the legal team. We have two attorneys currently and you know possibly more in the future and you want to make sure that the work is divided equally among them that if sales has a question they know who to reach out to, how to reach us and that means it starts with me really being the triage person. So as I mentioned with our ticketing system, if someone does create a ticket, it goes to me first and I assign it to whoever is the responsible party. If it's a red line, assigning it to an attorney. If it's a contract generation request, assigning it to myself. If it's something else like corporate governance, assigning it to our head of legal. So it really depends on what requests are coming in, but I wanna make sure that I'm the first point of contact that way the attorneys can just focus on doing their work and they don't have to worry about what's coming in and organizing it now i am the first point of contact but i'm also the person that generates all of the contracts so as i mentioned with ironclad i will go in and generate the contract using the template and then send that off to the salesperson or whoever is requesting it so that's another thing that the attorneys don't have to worry about because it's pretty simple drafting we're using templates and because I have a, a legal background myself and I was also an attorney, or I guess technically I still am, I'm able to do some really light drafting that um, I feel comfortable with and that I don't mind doing. And then once it reaches the redlining stage where the customer came back with changes, then I assign it to the attorney. So in that sense, I see the contract at the beginning when I generate it and I also see it at the end. So the other great thing about Ironclad and other contract lifecycle management programs is that they also have a repository so this is where you store all of your contracts and storing contracts is more than just creating a folder in a google drive you also want to be able to have metadata so each contract has data points That's the agreement start date the expiration date the msa term or master services agreement uh, if you negotiated an msa Often there are things that you don't normally agree to in your standard MSA that you want to track. You know, which indemnification obligations are we held to? Which contracts can we assign without getting consent? There's different things that you want to make sure you're tracking. That way, if something ever happened, you can run a report and see which contracts fall under that category. So for me, that meant two parts. One, uploading all of our historical contracts. There were like 500 of them or something and then tagging all of those and then going forward building a good system in ironclad that can tag all of these contracts and run reports in the future so it's really two projects of importing historical contracts because we obviously didn't use ironclad from the day one the company was started so there's all these contracts that are just stored somewhere that need to be moved tagging them and then making sure you can tag going forward. So whenever a contract is signed, I'm the one that coordinates the signature. We use DocuSign. I send that out. I make sure it's the correct version, comparing them from the last version. And then once it's signed, storing it in Ironclad, tagging the data, and then archiving and that's it. The next category I want to talk about is knowledge management. So essentially this is how can we empower the people at our company to find information by themselves? If you can imagine, we get inundated with questions all the time, often ones that are repeated, things about processes, things about how do we store this data, how do we work with this company, um, what's the process for this, things that you probably answer almost like an FAQ. You can create special pages, so if you use like Confluence, we use Slab, different basically wiki pages where people can source and self-serve the information on their own. Um, sometimes people have templates in a folder if that's what your company decides to do. So knowledge management is pretty broad, but I view it as putting information out there that people at your company can view. So you might have a privacy page or some basic privacy questions. Um, we have an NDAs page. You know, when do you need an NDA? How do you request an NDA? Once I started the ticketing system, I created a slab page about how to request legal help, going through steps, showing them diagrams, pictures, making it really easy that if someone asks you a question, you can point them to that page or they know where to go themselves to find the information. 
This could also mean trainings, uh, presentations, PowerPoints, PDFs, ways that you can empower your company to know wh what to do and how to handle things is all under the umbrella of knowledge management. Okay, the next category is vendor management. So some companies might have a separate procurement team, we don't. So I'm also the first point and triage point for vendors. If a new vendor needs to be reviewed, it comes through me, I assign it to the attorney, making sure to store those contracts that are signed in Ironclad. So Ironclad can do both sales and vendor contracts. Um, we don't currently keep track of renewals that's on the finance team, but some people in legal operations might keep track of renewals, making sure if there is a renewal that you've reviewed the right contracts, um, making sure that the right payment terms are in there. Basically anything that falls under vendors, you would take care of and be that point person. You may not be the one actually reviewing the contract, but you're the one that makes sure it all runs smoothly, similar to the life cycle of a sales contract. The second to last category are OKRs, or Objectives and Key Results. You might be familiar with this if you do performance reviews, if you already work at a company. Often people set personal OKRs, department OKRs, basically goals for yourself or for your department and what you're focusing on either quarterly, yearly, monthly, whatever the cadence may be. And as legal operations, we help with those things. We help to make sure that attorneys are filling in their OKRs. We could do quarterly check-ins to make sure people are on top of their OKRs, setting those department OKR goals, working with your head of legal or general counsel to make sure you understand what your OKRs should be. Um, and I think because this is slightly administrative and you kind of have to make sure people are on top of it, you are looking across the entire department, the legal team, how are you doing, how are you progressing, how can you look for better efficiencies, and really that's the heart of legal operations as well, is making sure your attorneys and the people on your legal team are working efficiently, they're happy, they're able to do their jobs, they're not stressed, overwhelmed. You're looking for points to make sure that they are working the best that they can and helping to serve their internal customers and clients like the sales team. Under this also falls the metrics portion I briefly mentioned. Often you can use metrics to see how quickly you're turning a contract around. How many days does it take you to redline a contract, to review a contract? If it's too slow, where are the bottlenecks? Really understanding your metrics are important and that's why we wanted to go with Jira Service Management because of the metrics reporting to make sure we understand the data because when you're working heads down you often don't see how long it, it takes you to do things until you see it on paper and in numbers. So metrics is another part of the OKRs which also could be its own category but uh, you really need to understand your metrics and be able to tell a story to your general counsel or head of legal. And this could also help you to get resources. Maybe you need another attorney. Maybe you need better technology. Metrics all goes along with that. My last category is the other category. This could mean basically anything. As legal operations and really being in a small legal team or maybe any legal team, you get asked to do things that you may not normally do. Data requests. How many contracts do we have? Which contracts have this term? Um, which contracts are coming up for expiration? Can you help me pull this data? Can you help me clean up this data? Can you send me all the contracts? Can you send me this contract? There could be things like due diligence requests. Uh, help me fill out this spreadsheet. We need to fill out this vendor questionnaire. Um, we need to fill out this customer questionnaire. Can you help me with this and this? Really. There could be anything that falls under your category of legal operations because each team is different, each company is different. And this also leads me to my last point, which is being in legal operations is very open-ended. It's still a fairly new position. It's still a fairly new role at different companies. And mentioning again, different companies work differently, obviously. right? What I do at my company may be different than what you'll do if you start a position in legal operations really focus on what your company needs. So for me, again, that was making sure Ironclad or our contract management system was working, making sure we got that ticketing system in, and then making sure we had the metrics. Once that's in place, I can now focus on other things. Things that might be coming up like building out the knowledge management slab pages, building out a better process for answering vendor due diligence questions. It really depends. So I wanted to give you guys a few other ideas of things that I've seen other companies do in legal operations and things that are on top of my mind. Strategy for the legal department, working with your general counsel or head of legal on 
what is our overall strategy? What do we want to accomplish as a legal department? Like I said, finding those efficiencies, finding those bottlenecks and how to resolve them. Managing many attorneys. Sometimes you have 5, 10, 15, 20 attorneys in your team and you're kind of seen as the person to corral them together, manage them, make sure everyone has a good workload, everyone's happy, uh, where, can, where are there certain issues, and really managing to make sure that they're doing their jobs. There might be outside counsel management. If your company uses a lot of outside counsel, making sure their budget is correct, their fees are correct, reviewing their invoices, keeping on top of their work, that I hear it is a lot. We don't use it as often, but I can imagine that could be something that your company might ask you to do. Figuring out the budget, going through the numbers, actually figuring out spreadsheets and working with finance, something that you know your head of legal may have had to do in the past, but is now for you to help free them up to do other things. You might be doing new hire presentations. Uh, you also might be doing these due diligence or vendor questionnaires, which I mentioned, filling out basic things like tax ID, address, payment terms accepted, etc. And lastly, one important thing that I took away from a podcast I what I listened to previously was how to market yourself to the company. Yes, you work for that company, but internal marketing is never a bad thing, especially if you have all of these metrics and as you're working with sales to show them, you know, this is how fast we get through things. And this is how slow the customer is. And that way you're really selling yourself and your team to the other teams. And that way they trust you more. They understand when you push back on things, um, it just really can't hurt. And so that would be my last thing is that you may be asked to help market yourself internally to your own company. That wraps up what I do in legal ops and what you might be doing in legal ops. As I mentioned, each job is different, each position is different. So this is just a small snapshot of what I've been doing over the past few months. It could evolve, it could change. I know there's a lot more in the future for what I will or could be doing for my company. And so I hope this gave you a good glimpse into legal operations. If you have any questions as usual, please comment them below and I'll try my best to answer them. And also let me know what else you guys want to hear about regarding legal operations because now I've made these two videos and hopefully you have a better idea of what it means to be in the legal operations profession, but definitely let me know what else you guys would like to see or hear from me. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe for more content and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.